Sonic in the video games has always been pretty disinterested in romance, with Speed being this little blue arrow ace's only mistress. But Sonic in the Archie Sonic comics, or rather, in the Archie Sonic comics that existed pre the Super Genesis wave, didn't shy away from having romantic partners, and in classic Archie Sonic fashion, they're all actually pretty weird. So for this video, we're going to be tackling some of the weird Sonic stuff that related to Sonic's romantic life as we go into his time with each of these romantic interests. One of the earliest examples of someone having romantic feelings for Sonic actually comes from a character that most may not actually expect, which would be Bunny Rabot, who, shortly after being rescued by Sonic, finds herself infatuated with him. The weird part, though, comes a little bit later in the comics, actually 147 issues later, at the time, Anti-Sonic, or Scourge, had temporarily hopped through into Sonic's world and stolen his identity, which is easy to do when the only difference between them is that one of them wears a leather jacket and some sunglasses, whereas the other one just wears red shoes. While Sonic's doppelganger is pretending to be regular Sonic, he sneaks off into the woods where he canoodles with Bunny until they're interrupted by Tails, but eventually Scourge convinces Tails to storm off, which leaves the two to take a nap together alone in the woods until Bunny wakes up several hours later with her arms around Anti-Sonic. Weirdly enough, after the original Sonic returns, this nap the two took together is only briefly mentioned once and then never talked about again, which honestly is probably for the best. And you can probably guess who wrote this weird story. Now, pretty quickly after this, Sonic and his lady friends are out on a mission together, and before heading out, for some reason Sonic gives this speech in front of an American flag. I'm not really sure why, but uh, cool I guess. Although this party that the group had exclaimed goes pretty pear-shaped, as Bunny finds herself being captured and assimilated into Eggman's AI son Adam, which is a weird subject in itself. And this is what I can only describe as being one of the most unsettling drawings that I might have ever seen in any Sonic comic, and it comes pretty close to being one of the weirdest things I've seen in any comic, period. It actually makes me so uncomfortable that I don't even want to show the full thing on YouTube. If you want to find it though, it's somewhere around issue number 150. Sonic thankfully saves Bunny, which I mean thank god because I can only look at this teary-eyed face for so long. The two have a little kissing sesh shortly after that, and then... Weirdly enough, it's never talked about again. They don't talk about the moment where Anti-Sonic had tricked Bunny into napping with her, despite pretending to be someone that he isn't. They also don't talk about this moment where the two of them kissed after Sonic rescued her. And basically after this, Bunny goes on to show little to no interest in Sonic as she ends up focusing solely on Antoine, which honestly is a lot better. Next up on the canonical list of people having romantic feelings for Sonic would be Amy, who had first shown up looking a lot more like her appearance in Sonic CD and her feelings for Sonic are pretty clear from the get-go. However, much like in the games, Sonic doesn't really have any interest at all in Amy. And considering that in these comics she's 10 and Sonic is 16, this is pretty understandable. Although, weirdly, Amy didn't stay 10 for long. And I don't mean that she celebrated her birthday, but basically, Amy got tired of being turned down for joining the Freedom Fighters due to her age, and so she wished on a magic ball to be older, and well, it aged her up. Think of the movie Big, or 13 going on 30, but instead of a dramatic change in age, she just kind of skipped to the middle of puberty, which actually sounds worse than being either 30 or Tom Hanks. Sonic would actually go out with this new older Amy at one point, but it likely wasn't that he was interested in anything romantic with her, and more so it was in response to Sally having a boyfriend with somebody else, which made Sonic a tad bit bummed out because he was a little bit jelly. I really like this image of the two of them walking away together, but when you think of the fact that Amy has the mind of a 10 year old, it does start to feel pretty weird, right? Moving on from Amy, we would have Mina Mongoose, who also at one point would not only be interested in Sonic, but she would actually get pretty close to dating Sonic. See, Sonic had found her in the rubble of a destroyed city, as she mourned the death of her mother. Which may not be the most ideal meet-cute story, but everyone has to start somewhere, right? Although Mina pretty quickly gets some feelings for Sonic, Sonic in Sonic fashion just isn't that into her. That is, he isn't into her yet, because eventually, Mina would start a musical group, and pretty shortly after this, Sonic would get the hots for her, because I mean, who isn't into a musician? The two would end up pretty close to becoming a couple, if not for two reasons that prevented them from having their chance. The first one being that, at one point, Sally was captured, and while being rescued, Mina saw that Sonic still had some feelings towards her. And the second one, which actually was probably a bigger bummer, was that while fighting some alien brain things, Sonic got teleported across the galaxy, and he was assumed dead on Mobius. Like, they thought that he was gone, 
completely. They had erected the statue for him, they mourned, they grieved, and Sonic was gone for an entire year in space as he tried to find his way back. So, you know, the usual stuff that prevents love. We've all been there. Nearing the end now, we have Fiona Fox, who actually initially disliked Sonic, but after he returned from his year-long hiatus in space, where he had been assumed dead like I said previously, she had changed her mind, and really, who can blame her? Because I think I'd also fall for a spaceman who had sacrificed himself only to come back a year later, because that's pretty rad, right? This relationship, however, caused a bit of a rift between Sonic and Tails, because Tails was crushing hard on Fiona, but ultimately was turned down due to his age. I guess there was no magical MacGuffin ball that made Tails older like it did with Amy, but there was that one time where he had become really jacked and fought against the mammoth, so you're kind of missing out here, Fiona. Fiona, however, is not exclusively into Spaceman Christ-like figures, as it turns out that her heart really belongs to bad boys. And who's badder than a green Sonic who wears a leather jacket? Yeah, Anti-Sonic's back, and Anti-Sonic in classic Anti-Sonic form is stealing everybody's women. So it turns out that Fiona was two-timing Sonic with Sonic, or rather, Scourge who is Sonic from an evil world, and I have a video on him if you're curious to learn more about him. Bizarrely, this is probably the most tamed way that any of these romantic interests have ever gone, which is saying a lot when leaving someone for their evil counterpart from another dimension is considered to be normal. Now, of course, as pretty much expected by pretty much anybody ever, our last bachelorette here is Princess Sally, and much like Ross and Rachel from Friends, there's been this constant will-they-won't-they they thing going on between the two of them, and I mean really constant like over 200 issues constant before they actually became an item. During that time, there were some kind of goofy moments that happened though. Like there's this one time where Robotnik finds out that they're putting on a wedding and that Sonic and Sally are going to get married, so Robotnik crashes the wedding, only to find out that he didn't read the fine print of the newspaper that said that they were tying the knot, which revealed that this was all just a play for some reason. <laughs> there was also this other time that Sally was gravely injured and they thought that she was dead, but it turned out that her death was actually faked and she was inside of some kind of stasis chamber that made her look dead. And of course, the stasis chamber looked like that weird glass coffin thing from the Sleeping Beauty. So of course, Sonic would wake her up in a similar fashion to the Sleeping Beauty. In what I think is the first moment actually where Sonic professed his love in the comic. But in the classic will-they-won't-they they fashion, Sally doesn't remember anything because she was still waking up while Sonic went in and kissed her and said that he loved her. Eventually though, as it always goes. This will-they-won't-they they scenario of course turned into a they will, won't they, scenario, as the two of them eventually decided that they were going to go out together. And shortly after that, they became an item. Now, to be honest, I've never been super big on romance-heavy plots, but there is this one really fun moment that I enjoy in this comic, which is that at one point Sonic and Sally find themselves being harassed by some Mobians, only for best girl Amy to leap through the moonlight with her hammer before she came crashing down and then went on to threaten these Mobians with her hammer to leave Sonic and Sally alone for the night. I do always enjoy seeing this side of Amy who does care for Sonic but isn't just this crazy fangirl who is obsessed with Sonic. Although this relationship ends up being pretty short-lived because Sally would end up sacrificing herself and becoming a robot who serves Eggman. Of course until the Super Genesis wave happens and I guess we can just pretend that none of this ever happened but I've got a video that covers pretty much the entire Mecha Sally story if you're curious. But if you're curious about Sonic's relationships after the Super Genesis soft reboot, well don't be because there are none. Sonic's character becomes a lot closer to his video game counterpart, with Speed and Chili Dogs being his only love now, and it would pretty much go on to be like that forever when it comes to either Archie or IDW, and in my opinion, that's for the best. That's also because I find it looks really weird when two Mobians kiss each other. Their mouths just aren't made for that, I don't know. Now this was a bit of a different video for me, and likely it's going to be my last Sonic comic related video before the new year, just because I need to wrap up with some Christmas stuff and also with school stuff. There are videos scheduled actually for December, but I'll get onto talking about that at a future date. The video, like I said, was pretty different, and instead of tackling one specific subject or one character like I typically do, I went for more broad strokes on one particular topic, covering a much larger area, but in a lot less detail. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys might think about that and if you'd like to see more content like this. It would just mean that I could cover longer stories, but in a shorter amount of time. I'd also love to hear any suggestions that you might have for future videos, because a lot of these suggestions have actually been bringing some of my more favorite works as of late. So with that, I'd like to thank Midori Natsumi, who I probably mispronounced, 
for asking their question related to Sonic and his romantic interests, which led me down this road. As always, it would be great if you could do the stuff that people here ask for, like liking, subscribing, and giving me your firstborn child. All I hope is that you have a wonderful day.